Joining us now, Jeremy Siegel, Professor Emeritus of Finance at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business and Chief Economist at Wisdom Tree. Uh, Jeremy, it's, it's good to see you. I think we spoke to you Thanks. recently. I, reading some of your notes this morning, I, uh, I think what I drew from these is that, that the markets are so important to Trump that the, tr that the markets could preclude him from, from doing some of the more draconian things that he's talked about uh, versus him doing the things first and then seeing what the, how the markets react. So, so you think that the markets could actually dictate Trump's policies? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I mean, President Trump is the most pro-stock market president we have had in our history. Uh, he, he measured his success in his first term by how well the stock market did. So, you know, it, it seems to me very unlikely that he's going to uh, implement policies uh, that are going to be bad for the stock market. And in addition, the bond market, you know, we, we, we're beginning to talk about the bond vigilantes again. I, I thought what happened on uh, Wednesday after he won when those yields went up was a, was a shot across the bow saying, hey, you know, um, just watch out what you do. Uh, we're there. And uh, uh, all the tax cuts you promised, uh, we're very skeptical unless uh, there's other structural changes that are going to happen. So both the bond market and the stock market are going to be really big constraints on, uh, you know, many of uh, Trump's programs. That said, I mean, you know, uh, it, you know because he's taken the House, Senate, uh, and presidency, I think an extension of his 2017 tax cuts looks pretty much like a slam dunk, but the expansion to all his other tax cuts is certainly going to be much more difficult. Some of the things that you described and just knowing what some of his proposals are, I don't see how you can get a bond market and a stock market or why you'd expect uh, coincident rallies in both. Some of the things that would help the stock market uh, would kill the bond market and maybe yeah. even vice, and even vice versa. So how, how, do you, how is he going to walk that line or wh which policies well, do you think end up uh, taking uh, precedence? Well, I think that what the stock market certainly likes is less regulation, a more pro-merger stance. I mean, that's, that's positive right. uh, and, and certainly it d does not add to our our government debt. So I think that, that that's a positive That you can do both. But all, but all the tax cuts and all the, if there's a, you know, if the deficit widens, even from where it is now, which is just, it is a terrible year uh, for the deficit, mm -hmm. obviously. If it widens from there with a lot of the giveaways and a lot of the, the tax cuts, that would be bad for the bond market. Obviously, a lot of the Biden administration spending can be good in a Keynesian way, for, for, but, you know, the, the gains are kind of eaten up by inflation, but it's been good for the stock market. Yeah, but, but you, you know, certainly that, but you, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, if, if, the, bond, if the bond market, if, if yields go up dramatically, and I still think yields are, are, are going to go up, um, uh, you know, the normal situation, uh, Joe, is that... Uh, the the ten year is between 100 and 150 basis points above the Fed funds rate. Not don't forget we've been in this strange inversion category that is very atypical of history for you know two and a half three years. Normally we do get that bond rate above. That's a normal interest rate. So you, you know I I don't think the Fed is lowering to 2.9. I mean that was their long term. I really think it's probably going to settle Fed funds somewhere between three and a half and four, but that really means a 5% or so uh, tenure. And if uh, Trump goes all in on, on all his tax promises, uh, I would say that that would, that would be higher. So I think the trend of higher long-term rates is, is, is going to be with us. Um, um, by the way, I, I, I listened to your discussion about independence of the Fed. I don't think there's any appetite in Congress <laughs> to repeal the Federal Reserve Act. Um, in fact, instead of criticizing Jay Powell, I, I think Trump should thank Jay Powell because his overly easy policy 
during the Biden administration causing all that inflation was certainly one of the reasons why Trump won the election. Uh, and Trump has, himself has said, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to keep Powell on to the end of his term in the middle of 2026. So I, I really don't, uh, you know, I mean, he, he might want a little bit more consultation, but the market likes the independence of the Fed. If he messes any substantial way with the independence of the Fed, that is not going to be good for the bond market or the, the stock market. It just seems like it's going to be much harder to raise rates ever, if, if necessary. Yeah. And, and, and it, like Trump, with the 50 basis point cut, it's like, hey, this is awfully political here before an election. And then the one we just had, the 25, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's I like it. That's, I like that cut. Uh, so, and they love lower rate. But how is, and Jay Powell, some people said it was a nod. You know, we were going to cut 25 all along, but it certainly yeah. would endear him uh, to Trump at this or point. Or it would make him smart politician. Right, if he's and, and again, right exactly, to keep yeah. lowering rates. But how do we ever do what's necessary? We'll be stuck at zero again. The same thing that they did last time, we'll have a hard time raising rates again. It, no, it'll be, I, don't, I don't think we're going don't think so? I mean, to take a look, I mean, the... The, uh, the, 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 the futures market itself has taken out 100 basis points of cuts from that September meeting already and looking at the strength of the economy. And, uh, you know, Becky was certainly right. Politicians have always wanted lower rates. Remember Wright Patman during the 1960s and 70s used to rail against the Fed and the raising of the interest rates, the populace from Texas well, and all that. You, this goes back to Jefferson and want, Hamilton, if you, you really want to look at it. don't want Congress running your monetary George Hamilton. policy. No. Uh, no, I even mean, though the, the, the Constitution uh, actually gives the power to regulate money to the House of Representatives, uh, but, Congress, in its wisdom, says we have to create an independent central bank.